Hey, hi there, welcome back to another video. In the last tutorial, we um, made a very good progress creating the tests for our account associate plugin. Um, but I said that we'll be focusing on te testing the actual query in the next tutorial. So this is the next tutorial, but we won't be testing just th that just yet. I want to focus on another aspect, which is kind of a prerequisite for, for testing these queries. Um, and it's it's kind of a different thing that, that you, you might be expecting here, but hear me out. So we have this, th this is ex an example of one of our unit tests here, and we're using these constants here. And we've been using the, the constants for, for the field names, um, the, the constants for logical names of the columns um, everywhere. We've been using it, we've been using them in the account capitalized. We have this name here. We've been using that in the actual plugin. We have this account attribute here. Um, so these constants are everywhere. And if we want to use them, we have to copy them around. Um, it's not so bad because we don't have many of these and that's 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 pretty kind of manageable and if we had even more of these we could nicely pack them into kind of constant classes which we could pack in a shared project and that would work just fine but there's an even better even better way and an even um it there's a better way and which also gives you better developer experience let's say so if you take a look at, at, at this example, for example, yeah, uh, we're creating a new entity here. And specifically, we're c c creating a new contact entity here. And we're specifying, so we must tell Visual Studio, okay, this is an entity, it's of type contact. And then we can we can specify the fields here. Now this might not be the best example because we don't want this email here. So um, maybe yeah maybe this example no target. So uh, yeah we're creating the uh, the entity and the contact, and then we're pretty much blindly trusting ourselves that this email address field is actually here, and there are no so if you check um, so. This, this entity, these entity attributes, um, don't perform any any type checks or or anything. Uh, so we're just Visual Studio is just blindly trusting us that we will we will do the right thing and use the 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 right logical names and the right types for the fields. But that might backfire in some scenarios when the plugins get more complicated when you're not so familiar with with kind of the data model. Um, all kinds of examples and so yeah you might have already guessed that there's a better way going uh, about this um, so and it's replacing this new entity with something more specific now wouldn't it be nice if we could instead of um, creating a new entity if we could just create a new contact like that uh, contact associate not yeah thank you but <laughs> what if there was a way to to use this syntax so instead of creating a new entity and telling it that it's a contact, that we would have some sort of classes uh, pre-generated right from Dynamics um, and with all the attribute, uh, attributes. So instead of specifying the attributes in kind of a dictionary way, dictionary way by specifying uh, strings as, as the parameter names, what if we could instead use, let's say we're using email address one here, if we could do email address one equals this thing. And it would also know that this should be a string and just um, and and tell us that we're wrong if this wouldn't be set to a string. Now, this is very confusing, but I hope it does make sense um, because there is actually a way to do them, to, to make these, these classes, to generate these classes right out of CRM without any manual work whatsoever. Um, it's called early bound classes. They're very, very cool. And recently, um, a new tool for generating them has been has been made available, and it's very fast. So it's yeah. Let's just get right into it. How to generate these? Um, so yeah, you will be you will be much much safer and and much much more um, yeah much happier when writing these plugins. So yeah, let's for for, for to to generate these early bounds, you need extra toolbox um, as always, and yeah, just type in early. And you will see there, are the, I have two plugins for this early bound uh, gen, uh, generation. 
Um, there is this early bound generator version 2, which we will be using. If you don't see it, it or if you only see this version 1 or without version, just go to configuration, tool library, and then search for early. And just make sure to install this early bound generator version 2. Um, pick this checkbox, install. I already have it, so it's fine. Then the next thing that you want to do is just open the, the plugin. Um, I'm already logged in, but you might need to do it again if you logged out um, in between. Um, and there it is. This is the, the way to generate the plugins. Um, it's It looks very user unfriendly, but it's actually very user friendly. It's not that bad once you, once you get to know it a bit. Now, the first thing that you want to change here is, or, or check here, is the settings path. By, by default, this settings path, so you might be worried that if you ever need to kind of regenerate these classes, so if you have a custom entity or if you add additional columns to your contact, then obviously you would need to regenerate these classes um, and you would want to just repeat, uh, you would just want to start from whatever you had um, earlier and to do that you can actually save all of this stuff here in a nice little XML file which you can check into git and um, then you don't have to worry about it so just open this folder and find where this settings XML is now I already tried this so your your file might be named differently so just make sure what your file name is and it might be in a different folder so uh, just locate the file that you see here and then copy it, go to your solution folder and just paste it right into it, uh, right in the folder again. So I made a copy here because I already have one, um, but I will just use this existing one. So double click on it. And now we're using the settings, which will get saved in, in Git as well when, when I make, make a commit. So about the settings, there's a lot of stuff here. Um, don't worry about this just yet, um, there's just a couple of, of settings that you need to change. First, and this one is very important for your <laughs> mental health, I would say. So there is this audible completion notification. When generation finishes, um, this program uses uh, Microsoft voice synthesis and it, there is a very scary robot voice telling you that option sets have been completed successfully. And I got very scared once I first heard this. So just say, set it to false so you're, that you're, you won't be as scared as I was. So set this to false. Then the next thing that you want to set is this namespace and set this namespace to your solution name or to your, to your solution prefix. So my solution is named ls.plugins and all my plugin names start with the same prefix. So ls.plugins.account capitalize. This one is similar, so I'll just use ls.plugins. So that's good. Um, now the next thing that you want to do is go down here to entities whitelist and then um, click on this ellipsis button and here on this side, you will see all the entities that you have in your system. Now, you don't want to generate every entity here because then your plugins will be massive. This is just too much information. Um, Visual Studio will not complain, but it will be, it's not a good practice to just, to just dump any, everything. So um, make sure to only select the entities that you use. In my example, I'm only using contacts, so I'll generate contacts and I'll also generate accounts because I've used them in this uh, account capitalize plugin. So um, I've selected account and contact here and I'll click on save and I'm almost ready to go. So this um, just also make sure to um, for this entity relative output path. This is the actual name of the file that will get generated. And if there's anything before that, if, if there is any, um, any slash, this, this means that it will be put in a subfolder. Um, I usually just put them right near to my configuration so that it's, it's easier to, um, to locate. Uh, so just delete everything and um, just, just keep entities.cs and do the same with option sets.cs um, and you don't actually have to worry about actions here. Now, the last thing that, that's very nice um, to, to have um, is this 
generate entity attribute name constants. Now we won't be using that just yet, but just make sure to set this to true and then just save your configuration. Um, yeah, wrong button. But uh, yeah, just save the configuration. I believe the configuration is also saved when you just click on generate. So that's what I'll do. And um, yeah, just wait, wait a couple of seconds. This used to be a very long wait, but now it's just really a couple of seconds. So there we go, it's it's done. Um, and you can see that code written to to this folder. So if you for if you in in any case, um, if you yeah, don't don't worry about that. Um, if you are missing the, the files or anything, um, be sure to check in that folder. So I'll go to my to my tests project now, right click on it, add, add the existing item, and then go to LS plugins. And then, uh, so this is where, where I have my configuration and then select every file that has been generated. You can check by date modified, but um, this, this program will create CRM service context, entities, entity option sets, and option sets just without entities. So make sure to add all four files and click on add. And this will, if I go back to my contact associate tests, now I can see that this contact has been resolved. Um, but, and, and yeah, now it's actually aware of the fields that are in the contact entity. So I can do now ID and this will be the ID of the contact. Now I can also do first name, let's say, and this will actually be, this will actually set the first name uh, field of, of, of the contact entity. And as you can see, you don't have to worry about any constants here. It's all, it all just works out of the box for you. And um, I've, I've made an error with, with capitalization here. So I'll just delete that and do email address one again. And this is now good to go. So email address one is of type string and this is defined in, in this, this generated entity. So there's additional la layer of safety in here. And if you, yeah, if we do a, a similar example here, if I replace this entity contact, we just contact. And instead of this account attribute, um, if I do parent, parent customer ID equals new entity reference, um, this contact class is aware that this is an entity reference and it's not complaining because I already have an entity reference here. But uh, yeah, if this would be a string, for example, that would be a problem for, for in, in this example. So there you go. There's another la layers of safety and you don't have to practically ever use logical names um, from the CRM and you don't have to worry about these constants. So I don't know about you. That's, that's kind of a nice addition to the plugin. Um, and yeah, in the next tutorial, we'll definitely look at how to use fake hacks from easy, um, to check the actual queries, to finally finish the, the, the unit tests, um, and then hopefully move on to something more interesting. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.